Hi everybody, it's Kasha Dupuy from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library here for our weekly STEAM story time. Um, so I'm just getting a few more things organized before we get started, but we'll see what we can do here. Yeah, thanks for joining us if you're here. We'll get started in about one more minute or so. Just making sure all our technology is working because we have some new stuff today. Yay! It's exciting for me. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Wonderful. Let's just make sure we're all good to go. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. I wonder if that's better. We're just getting some new stuff. And even though I've tested, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So if someone can let me know if that's better, if you can hear me a little bit better, that would be awesome. Brought a little bit closer to my face, so we'll see. Okay. And thanks for bearing with us and all this fun stuff. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So it's Wednesday, 11 o'clock, means it's time for our STEAM story time. Um, so again, my name is Kasha Dupuy, and I'm from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library. And every Wednesday, we meet to do something called STEAM story time. So it is a special story time that is based on. Um, concepts about science, technology, engineering, or environment, art, and math. Um, so today, we are going to be talking about bugs and gardens, because I think everyone's garden is probably growing really well. We've had a lot of hot weather, which means all the plants like to grow. Um, I don't know if you've been watering. We've had a few rainy days, because plants need water to grow too. So that is um, something that uh, we're gonna talk about today and also who lives in our garden, and that's bugs. So let's see, okay. So I'm gonna switch over the camera so you can see me now. Hi everybody. Uh, so today we're gonna be talking about bugs and bugs who live in gardens. And we call them our bug buddies because they are very important to um, our environment and our gardens and for us to have food and all those kind of things. So pollinators and beetles and bees and butterflies, all those things are very important and they have a special place in our gardens. So we're going to talk about them and we're going to make a special place for them to live uh, so that if, you know, there's predators around or if it gets too hot or too cold or something, they have a special place to stay so that they'll be safe and survive and help us out even more. So um, hi, everybody. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, Jay. Nice to see you guys. Hi, everybody else that's tuned in. If you'd like me to say hi to you, um, mention in the comments, and then I will say your name. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to start with our story today. Um, and these are beautiful books. This is a beautiful series of books. There's a whole bunch of them. There's about one's about snow, one's about ponds. Um, this one is about gardens, and it's called Up in, Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt. And it's written by Kate Messner um, and with art by Christopher Silas Neal. So thank you very much for letting us use your beautiful book in our STEAM story time today. This one was copy, um, published sorry, in 2015 by Chronicle Books. So thank you very much for letting us use these beautiful books in our STEAM story time today. We love them and they make wonderful additions to our story time. And the pictures are beautiful. I'll try to bring it close. We, also, we actually got a new camera, uh, so it might look a little different today. A little bit more clearer maybe? I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> Um, but yes, you'll be able to see pictures a little bit clearer too. So this one is called Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt, and it's written by Kate Mess Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal, published in 2015 by Chronicle Books. Let me just get my kit. There we go. Up in the garden, I stand and plan. My hands full of seeds and my head full of dreams. What season does it look like? Does it look like summer? I don't think so. I think maybe it's very early spring, maybe even just the end of, of winter, because there's a little bit of snow on that branch there. I'm not sure if you guys can see. A little bit of snow. It's 
Spring sun shines down to melt the sleepy snow. Wind whistles through last year's plants and mud sucks at my rain boots. It's not quite time, Nana says. Down in the dirt, things need to dry out and warm up. What's down there? I ask. Down in the dirt is a whole busy world of earthworms and insects, digging and building and stirring up soil. They're already working down in the dirt. Look at all the bugs on that page. Amazing. Hi, Avidan. And Josie, hi, how's it going? <laughs> I finally figured out how to see comments consistently, so thanks for saying that. Hi, guys. Up in the garden, we snap brittle stalks, scoop rustly armfuls, and wheel away weeds for the chickens. While they squabble and scratch, we spread compost over the soil. So what do you think those chickens are looking for? Maybe leftover seeds from last year? Um, yeah. A lot of people have chickens in their yards now and they help kind of keep bad bugs away that eat plants. And you know, chickens poop and poop is good for plants and soil, right? Something with compost. Down in the dirt, pale bugs chew through last year's leaves. I give a gentle poke. They roll up tight and hide in plated suits of armor, roly poly round. Have you guys ever played or seen um, potato bugs, like those little ones that like, they look like a little oval when they're walking and then you touch them and they roll up into a little ball. We used to collect them, me and my sister when we were younger. Up in the garden, it's time to plant. I trail a furrow with my finger and sprinkle seeds in a careful row. When you make a furrow with your finger, you push your finger into the soil and make like a little trough, like a little channel. Give them a drink, Nana says. We pat them down to snuggle in the dark. Sounds cozy to be a seed. Down in the dirt, a tomato hornworm rests. That's a hornworm, waiting for wings. And the leaves where she'll lay her eggs. So this will actually become a moth. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit too. Up in the garden, carrot plants sprout. Pea blossoms bloom. Wasps are on the prowl, and honeybees visit, leg, visit legs loaded with pollen. Pollen is very important to all of our plants. If we didn't have, if bees and other pollinators didn't carry pollen from place to place, uh, many of our plants wouldn't have fruit, many of our plants wouldn't have flowers, all those things would happen, so we need to protect those kind of bugs. Okay, I'm making sure that my book is, the book is right in the picture there. Oh, she's having a nice cool drink of water. Hopefully you guys have been having lots of water today in the last couple of days. I weed and wilt in sun so strong, even Nana looks for shade. Down in the dirt, earthworms tunnel deep. I'm jealous of their cool, damp dark. Up in the garden, rain shower. Nana turns, up in the garden, rain shower. Nana turns the hose on me. Have you guys done that? Sprayed some people before? <laughs> I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in Nana's rain. Down in the dirt, water soaks deep. Roots drink it in, and a long-legged spider stilt walks over the streams. Have you guys seen those really long-legged spiders? Daddy long legs, we call them. Um, those are my favorite. They're so cool. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a chipmunk there. I didn't see that before. And a dragonfly. Yeah, but daddy long legs are really neat. They can't hurt you at all. All they want to do is hide and hang out in the garden. Mm -hmm. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs feast on aphids. Aphids are bad bugs that can actually eat plants. They eat all the leaves and then the leaves can't, can't grow anymore because they can't get any more sunlight. So ladybugs keep aphids at bay. Nana crunches green beans. I bite a ripe tomato, warm from the sun. Juice dribbles down my chin. I love this page, it's my favorite. Down in the dirt, a robin's beak finds a cricket. A beetle, a grub. Slugs are scrumptious too. So that's a robin and just having some lunch, right? That's nature. Mm -hmm. 
What are those flowers? Does anybody know? I think they're sunflowers. I think. Up in the garden, we pick cubes and zucchini, harvesting into the dark. Bats swoop through the sunflowers. Yep, sunflowers. And I pluck June bugs from the basil until it's time for bed. Look, at there's a bat there. All these creatures and all these critters and bugs and insects, they all live in gardens. We might not see them all the time, but they're all there. Oh, I saw one of these last night. Does anyone know what that is? Hmm. Down in the dirt, skunks work the night shift. They snuffle and dig and gobble cutworms while I sleep. Hmm. I don't know if the skunk I saw yesterday was eating cutworms or eating something else. I'm not sure. <laughs> Up in the garden, a praying mantis wakes to hunt mosquitoes. Nana sprays away the aphids. And I'm after grasshoppers. Ready to swoosh, but... Snap! Someone else is faster. Down in the dirt, a smooth, shining gator snake, garter snake crunches on supper. Yeah. I haven't seen a snake around my house for a long time, but we did have them before. Yeah, they're not bad snakes. They're actually good. They keep a lot of um, bad insects. Not bad insects, but just insects at bay, right? Up in the garden, the wind grows cool. Pumpkins blush orange and sunflowers go to September. Nana ties them together to build a house for reading. Oh, that sounds magical. I love a sunflower house for reading. Hope you guys would too. Down in the dirt, an orb weave spider spins her web, strand by silken strand. She'll munch on moths tonight. Look at that beautiful web. So wonderful. Up in the garden, colored leaves litter the squash vines. And we know the cold is coming. Hurry, hurry and harvest. There's enough for the neighbors too. Down in the dirt, frantic ants gather what we leave behind. They're storing food for cooler days ahead. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're hiding food away in their underground caves so that they will have something for winter when there's no food. Up in the garden, frost draws lace on leftover leaves where secret egg sacs hang waiting for the warm to return. We say goodbye and spread the winter blankets. So it must be winter now. So we've gone from spring through summer, now fall, and now we're getting to winter. Down in the dirt, beetles burrow. Ants scurry home. Earthworms curl tight in the dark. When grandpa calls us in for soup, oh, I'll move it more there. When grandpa calls us in for soup, an autumn moon is rising. Up in the garden, dry corn stalks tremble and the wind smells like winter. But the long ripe days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladybug and the bumblebees, earthworms and ants are hunkered down, hiding, biding their time, dreaming of sunshine and blossoms and sprouts. Under the bare arms of trees and the blanketing snow, a whole new garden sleeps down in the dirt. So we saw a whole year of seasons in the garden. Pretty awesome. So that was Up in, Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt um, by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Um, it was published in 2015 by Chronicle Books. Um, also, before I go away from this book, because I love it so much, the one cool thing about these books is that there's so much other information in them. So these pages here talk about all the different kind of bugs and creatures that you would see in your garden, and they tell you what they do. So I'm going to run through them really quickly, um, and let's see if you can remember what some of them were. So at the very beginning, there were bark, 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 chickens, and then we talked about pill bugs, right? So the ones that are long and oval, and then you touch them and they roll into a ball. Mm -hmm. Um, hornworms, tomato hornworms are actually moths. Honeybees, we know honeybees. And we talked about why they're important as pollinators. Um, earthworms. Earthworms live in the dirt. And any kind of compost or any um, like fruit or vegetable garbage or sometimes even poop, um, earthworms will eat through and get all the good nutrients for us and put it back into the soil. And that makes the soil even better for growing things. Mm -hmm. Earthworms are very important. 
And they're awesome to hold, too. I'm not sure if you've held an earthworm before. You should try it if you haven't. Um, Long-legged spiders. Um, Daddy long legs. I love those guys. They're so cool to watch. And then they were talking about robins and bats. So those aren't bugs. They're creatures. They're um, birds and a mammal. And what they do is they fly around and they eat some bugs, and that's okay. But they also eat a lot of the bad bugs that might eat some of our plants. So it's important that we take care of them, too. June bugs um, only come out around June and July. Um, those are pretty cool. They're actually, I think their main purpose is to be food for other bugs mm, or animals, uh, like skunks. You guys have seen skunks before or raccoons. Cutworms, I've never really seen a cutworm, um, but we do have praying mantises and grasshoppers around my house. There was a praying mantis on the window the other day, and I was so surprised that it was still there because it was so hot. But they're used to that stuff, right? Um, garter snakes, we have them in Niagara, where we live. We have them here, but we don't see them that often. They like to stay hidden. They don't like to be seen by other people. And then there's spiders, um, which are all over the place, and they're important too. And then ants. Yeah, so we see ants all the time. So some of these bugs, um, they do a very good job of taking care of themselves. They don't really need us, aside from not hurting them. Um, but what I thought we would do is make a special place for them uh, that if they need to hide or if it gets too cold or too hot, we can give them somewhere to kind of hang out. So again, this was Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt by Kate Messner um, with art by Christopher Silas Neal, 2015 Chronicle Books. Thank you very much. So let's... I'm just going to switch over my camera because we have some new technology that I'm excited to show you guys. So let's see if this is going to work. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I will be right here. Are you ready to see? Okay. There we are. Oh, it worked. Exciting. All these little things, they make me happy when they work out the proper way. So like I said, we're going to make somewhere for our bugs, if they need to, um, have a space to live. Um, or hide out. So we, when when the library was open last summer, last spring actually, we had a program called The Wild. And we would go out into the wild of Niagara-on-the-Lake and we would hike and we would find cool bugs and birds and all this kind of stuff. And one of the times we went, we made bug hotels. Yeah, so we're going to make a bug hotel. So we don't need a lot of stuff. Um, we don't. The only thing you really have to get is a container that you can create your bug hotel in. So I have a plastic container only because I want to be able to reuse this. So maybe every year I'll clean it out, um, and when it's really broken or something, I can recycle it. But when we made our bug hotel in the wild for Niagara on the Lake, um, we used a cardboard box because the cardboard box will eventually break down. It will uh, decompose, right? So it's biodegradable. So because we didn't want to go back in the forest and pick up a plastic container, we put it in a cardboard box, and that is a great option too. But I'm just going to use this plastic one because it's going to stay at my house. And when it's ready to be gone, I will take it out and we will put it in the um, we'll put it in the recycling bin. Awesome, amazing. Okay, so what you need is a container, and I have pine cones, and pine cones are awesome little things because bugs can hide in all those tiny little crevices. Yeah. And you know what I learned? I learned this last week. Um, when pine cones are dry, they open up like this. But if a pine cone gets wet, it closes up. Yeah, I just learned this. I'm always learning things. Even if, as an adult, you learn things all the time. Okay, so you need some pine cones. Um, I have some branches with leaves on them. So they won't stay, they won't stay green and wet. They'll start to dry out. But bugs like um, kind of dry leaves too. They like to hide in them. It provides camouflage for them, so that, that means that they can hide in the dry leaves, but it also gives them insulation, so it keeps them nice and warm, right? Um, then you need some sticks. So I have a bunch of sticks here, just different sizes. And then I have some rocks, and I'm not sure if you guys can see them. I'm not going to take them out and put them on the table because I'm going to work right here, but I have just some different size rocks. So what we're going to do is you're going to start to build this bug hotel using all these materials or anything else you can find if you have different sticks if you have you know different size pine cones if you have some pieces of wood that would be really cool too yeah actually you know what i have some pieces of wood i wish i got them for this but you can go and do that when you build your own so all you're going to do is do this so my bug hotel is going to live like this so it's going to live on its side so i'm going to kind of build it on its side and i think you guys can see so i'm going to start by putting some rocks at the bottom here, just like that. 
And that will give a space for some bugs, like pill bugs and other ones to hide in between the little crevices, so little spaces between, just like so. But it will also make it heavy at the bottom so that the wind can't blow it over. Okay. Next, I'm going to take my pine cones, or this is where you can put wood or anything else that you have, and I'm just going to start to stack them just like this in my container, just like that. And I'm putting them facing out so that all of those little spaces can be open for bugs. Okay, so look, I got two layers. I have my rocks at the bottom because it's going to sit like this, and then I have my pine cones, which have a whole bunch of little spaces for the little bugs to live. I'm going to take some sticks and I'm going to put it like this. Hopefully it does not bend over. And I'm just going to break some of these sticks in half and I'm just going to start to fill them in to spots just like so. You know what? I'm going to break that one just like that. And I like this big stick. I'm going to put this one right here. I'm going to break this one. Oh look, that one didn't want to break so much. It kind of bent. So that means that this branch is a new branch that's still full of water and other things that keep a plant alive. Um, so maybe it got ripped off, you know, when we were doing some work in the backyard or like the wind, because it was kind of windy a couple days ago, or maybe a bird or other animal did it. It's just a fresh branch. So you're going to take some more of your sticks and just kind of stick them in wherever you want. And these little sticks look a little crazy right now but they actually give a spot for flying insects and ants and other animals to crawl onto so that they can get into our bug hotel. I kind of like the way it looks already. It looks really cool. Now the last thing you can do is take your leaves or your branches and all you're gonna do is start to tuck them in just like that. And you know what, you can tuck them in like that. You can leave some sticking straight out just like so. It's up to you. This is your design of a bug hotel so you can make it however you wish. You know what, I'm actually going to cut that in half. So remember when we talk about STEAM stuff? Um, STEAM is about science, technology, engineering, art, and math, and sometimes the environment. Well, often the environment. So this is kind of like a double E project. So we're talking about the environment of a garden, but we're also talking about engineering and designing your very own bug hotel. Okay. So, I'm going to put some branches like that at the bottom, just like so. All right, and that is my bug hotel. What do you guys think? Pretty cool. So, I am going to flip back to the other screen, and I'm going to show you what it looks like facing forward. Because you can kind of see it this way, but I'm going to show you the way it's going to look when I put it outside. So, I'm going to put it on its side like this. I might hide it in a little bush or under a bush or under a tree or something. And every once in a while, I will come and take a peek and see if there's any bugs living in there. Mm -hmm. I'd be love to see if you made your very own bug hotel. And I'd love to see if you take some observations um, and let me know what kind of bugs you see in there. I'd be curious to see. You know what I saw the other day? I've never seen a red bee before, but there was a red bee in my garden up front and it had really long legs and it was pumping its legs while it was getting pollen. Um, it's interesting. Around my house, we're getting a lot, a lot of forests are getting older, which means other insects and other plants and animals can grow there. Um, so I wonder if that's just one of those bugs that has come back to the area. Yeah, I'll see if I can take a picture next time. Okay, well that was our STEAM story time today. We read a book about being in a garden, the animals and plants that are in a garden, mostly the animals. We learned how to make a bug hotel, um, and now you guys can go and make a bug hotel of your very own at your house. Okay, so thanks for joining me, everybody. Hopefully you have a great rest of your Wednesday, um, and it's very hot, so make sure you're drinking lots of water, take lots of time to cool down, sunscreen if you're going to be outside, hopefully you're keeping cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will see you next Wednesday at 11 o'clock for our next team story time, um, and if you have any questions or comments or feedback, please let me know. Send me an email. I'm always open to hear from you um, as to what you think about our programming. Yeah. So our, my email is kdupuy at notlpl.org. Okay. Have a wonderful Wednesday, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Let's see if I can do this properly. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everybody.